mean, look at this view. It's freaking amazing. Check this out. Every once in a while. It's easy to get distracted because it's so freaking beautiful here. In your travels. I'm excited for this. You find some place so special. It's a workout. You can't wait to share it. We're making, yeah, we're making a YouTube video, yeah. For us. And very awe-inspiring. That's why we go. That place is this place. This is amazing. Unreal scenery. Now we've got sunshine and nature's beauty. We are leaping onto rock formations millions of years old, said to be mythological stepping stones. It is the place where giants walked across the Irish Sea. One second. That is if we can get down there and back in one piece. Going down them's a bit steep, but coming back up them's a killer. Yeah. <laughs> climb the castle, so let's climb and storm the castle. Plus a stop off at a castle made famous by Game of Thrones. And if you're Jon Snow, this is where you would eat. Hollywood couldn't script a more beautiful backdrop. Been a wonderful time here. Glad we came. From the forest to the food. I'm very excited for this. This steak and Guinness pie is basically why I went on this trip. From the mountains to the muttons. Hello, my friend. I've got nothing for you except a hearty thank you for making today so memorable right here in Northern Ireland. Join us as we take you along for a Giant's Causeway getaway. Forget Dublin, forget Belfast. We are taking you to the coolest place we found on the Emerald Isle right here on the Irish Sea. It's unreal and you're gonna learn about it in this episode of Window Seat. Seven in the morning. So it's a little early. We're heading out from Dublin up to Giant's Causeway today. So good morning folks, how are we all doing? Red. But it is an early wake-up call worth the alarm as we load onto the paddy wagon right in the heart of the city on O'Connell, its most famous street. We're about to become immersed in Ireland. So Dave is my name. I'm going to be your tour guide and driver. From Dublin's bullet-riddled general post office. Following on from the 1916 rising in 1922, we became uh, an independent country, so a Republic of Ireland as we know it today. To the O'Connell Monument, riddled with what else? You see her chest, that's a bullet hole. But we're the ones gunning for a memorable day this time, as we settle in for the three hour tour aboard this bus, the details of which we'll leave in the description below. We get a view of the Irish countryside as it changes from its characteristic bright green to a blanket of winter white. Just quick update on the weather conditions. So we woke up this morning in Dublin with the news that it had snowed overnight in the northern part of the country, in Belfast, so we were fully aware of that. Uh, it's warmed up a little bit, so the snow's not coming down anymore. It's now rain. Hopefully that doesn't stick around for the whole day. But regardless, this is one of those things you just have to deal with if you're going to plan a trip to this part of the world in January. It's one of the reasons we got such cheap airfare. You got to be ready for the weather conditions. No big deal. We're good. We got this. After a brief truck stop bathroom break, we're back at it, hugging the coast of Ireland before crossing into Northern Ireland and tracing the rugged coastline of County Antrim, we finally arrive at Bushmills, and we find the place where history and Hollywood collide, this ramshackle castle called Dunluce. Now, if you're a Game of Thrones fan, it's gonna look familiar. Never seen the show myself, but it looks pretty cool. It's an old castle, it's one of the first ones to actually have, if not actually the first, to have cannons on the outside to protect itself. Built on a basalt outcropping 120 feet above the ocean, the medieval castle dates back to the year 1500. Built by the McQuillan clan, but hotly contested by their rivals, the McDonalds, who finally seized the place in the mid-1500s. It has a history of bloody feuds and tall tales, the tallest of them that Maeve Rowe, the daughter of Lord McQuillan, was thrown into the castle tower and locked away because she was in love with the man other than the guy her dad had chosen for her. She tried to escape with her soulmate, but they were drowned in a nearby cave. Now, local legend says that uh, she still keeps watch from the tower above, and her cries can be heard on stormy nights. We heard no cries while we were here, but we may have to come back after dark to see about that. TV lovers know this place as Pike Castle of House Greyjoy from Game of Thrones, which could explain why so many people walk through its ruins these days. So have a lot of it together, and the nice thing is they can kind of show you each room you're in, like this is the manor house, so this would be like where all the dining happened. And if you were Jon Snow, this is where you would eat. Bottom line, Game of Thrones fan or not, this is a fantastic stop on your journey to Giant's Causeway. And it gives you a rich sense of Irish history and folklore and beauty. The place is just so iconically Irish. You've got the rolling green pastures off behind us here, those stark cliffs. 
uh, and the ocean uh, below. It is just the perfect side trip to get out of Dublin, get out of Belfast, and really take in the countryside. Back on the road, we pass through the village of Bushmills. Yes, the place where the famous whiskey is made. Sadly, there's no time for a stop off at the distillery, though you should if your schedule allows. We're too busy hurrying to a UNESCO World Heritage Site and the place the Irish call the eighth wonder of the world, Giant's Causeway. We have been anxious to lay our eyes on this magnificent force of nature, but first we got to figure out how to get down to see it. We'd hoped to take this tunnel straight to the paved path, straight to the coastline, but it's being repaved. The alternative? Steps. Lots and lots of steps. Now, one thing I will say is, guys, any problems walking? No. No, that's okay, because the steps are... Going down them's a bit steep, but coming back up them's a killer. Yeah. <laughs> with that unnerving warning, we're on our way. With the clock ticking, too, we only have an hour or so to enjoy this place because of our busy tour schedule. And most of that time is spent walking there and back. They said it was a bit of a hike to get there. It's about 10 to 15 minutes when the shuttle's not running. Definitely is, and a lot of uphill walking. So if you can't walk or you have difficulty, this isn't a good spot for you. So just know that if you're trying to come out here. And that's just the path. We haven't even hit the stairs yet. All 162 of them on a trail so narrow and untraveled it was once reserved for sheep and their shepherds. There is a warning that the trail is difficult, but they don't tell you about that until you're already down it. Those stairs, I mean, they're steep and they're fine, but I'm sure it's a lot more difficult because it's wet. So just gotta be careful but there's a lot of them. All right, so we're done with the stairs. Now we're on sort of the flat part of the trail. It's still steep, it's wet, a little bit uh, dangerous because you could certainly tumble and injure yourself, but uh, it's easy to get distracted because it's so freaking beautiful here. I mean, look at this view, it's freaking amazing. Check this out. The stunning views continue down at the shore as we round the corner and get our first glimpse of Giant's Causeway. How do you even explain this place? 40,000 basalt columns shaped like hexagons rising up out of the ocean, produced 60 million years ago by volcanic eruptions. It's really cool. It does look like somebody made it, but I guess they didn't. And why call it Giant's Causeway? Well, legend has it an Irish giant named Finn McCool created the causeway to get across the Irish Sea to face his rival, a Scottish giant named Benendonner. After their fearsome face-to-face, -face, legend holds that Ben and Donner tore up the path as he fled back home. And this is what's left of it. That section's called the wishing chair. There are countless paths to explore as you contemplate the history of this place and its uniqueness. It honestly does not even make any sense. It was just the waves just like crashing all around you. I mean, it's a very unique experience. They say the best time to come for great photographs is at sunrise, not in the late afternoon on a blisteringly windy day like we did. The conditions out here are very harsh. You're right on the Irish Sea. It's always windy and almost always cold out here, especially this time of year. So you got to be hardy if you want to come out here and see this thing. But believe me, it is worth the walk, it's worth the stairs, it's worth the rainy path because you've never seen anything quite like this before. If it looks vaguely familiar, Led Zeppelin shot the legendary cover photo for their album Houses of the Holy right here fitting since after a few minutes with our time running out, it's once again time for us to climb the stairway to heaven. But I'm not looking forward to this walk back up these stairs. It's fine. Here, we have an advantage because we live at altitude. So, you know, down here at sea level, doing a few stairs, not that big a deal. Now watch me fall to my death. Thankfully, that didn't happen. And in fact, once at the top, we never really felt quite so full of life. Having just seen one of nature's coolest tourist attractions, we spent a few minutes communing with sheep. Hello, my friend. I've got nothing for you, except a hearty thank you for making today so memorable right here in Northern Ireland. Taking in the sun over rolling green fields and hightailing it back to the bus so we didn't miss our ride to Belfast. Yeah, that's weird and goofy. And but before we call it a day, there are two more stops we can't miss. First lunch, and no matter where you stop here, the grub is going to be good. Our tour guide took us to a pub near Giant's Causeway, and whatever chills we had from our time at the Irish Sea quickly warmed. I am very excited for this. This steak and Guinness pie is basically why I went on this trip. Meat, pastry, potatoes galore, as Irish and unforgettable as it gets. And now, two minutes of me chewing. 
We could go on and on about the food in Ireland, but it is something to behold at nearly every restaurant in the country, so indulge and enjoy. You'll need to work off those calories, and is there a more picturesque place to do it than this? I've been told this is a place called the Dark Hedges, also another Game of Thrones thing, so once again, I'm not familiar. But we're walking, it's interesting looking, it's a lot of trees, but it's also just a way to work off lunch. A mysterious path flanked by birch trees dating back to the year 1775. This spot was the backdrop for several Game of Thrones scenes. I guess the driver was telling us that it was used for Game of Thrones because the producers were driving around and lost, but they saw, found this and it just looked cool, so it's a nice visual. So it's interesting. Do we need to be here? Not sure, but at least, you know, we are walking off lunch. As we hop back on the bus, destination Belfast. Yes, our legs are sore, but our stomachs and our hearts are full. From an Irish adventure that gave us a little bit of everything and left us wanting nothing. We've experienced it all today. Snow and rain, now sun and beauty. And the one thing that we have definitely experienced is an unforgettable time right here on the Giants Causeway on the Irish Sea. You've got to come here too. We've got full details and a link to our tour in the description below. We hope you enjoyed this video and we hope you enjoy them all. We'll be back one week from today with another brand new episode of Window Seat. In the meantime, I'm Jeremy Hubbard from Ireland. We'll see you next time.